Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I want to welcome you back to the channel. Well, it's been about 60 days now since I purchased this Ruger EC9S and it has been uh, rotated in as my new daily carry. Uh, my prior carry of two years was a car CT9, which I absolutely loved, but I was just in the market for something a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to conceal, so I decided to go the route of the Ruger EC9S. Uh, first things first, let's just make sure that we are in fact unloaded. As you can see, we did lock open and we are empty. Magazine is empty. Man, how do I begin? Uh, you know, I wasn't really even thinking about purchasing this pistol uh, when I first got it. Uh, it was just sitting there. The price was right. I think I paid about $230 out the door, tax included. I did purchase it from SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. And uh, contact information is right there on the screen. And it just fit the hand well. I mean, it just, it was a nice compact design. The overall fit and finish really caught me off guard. And it's part of the E-Series. If you're not familiar with the uh, E-Series Rugers, they are basically, I don't want to say stripped down, but they're a more budget-friendly version of pistols that Ruger currently has in production. They've got the Ruger 9E, which is based off the SR9. They've got the EC9S, which this is basically a simpler, lower-cost version of the Ruger um, LC9S, if I'm not mistaken. So, real quick, let's just take you through the specifications of this pistol. Let you know the basics about it, especially if you're thinking about putting this in your daily carry, and uh, we will go from there. All right, so aside from a few features, which we'll highlight here in just a minute or two, the, the Ruger EC9S is, for all intents and purposes, identical to the LC9S. So your capacity is 7 plus 1, but there are some options for extended magazines. The slide material is a hardened alloy steel. The barrel material is an alloy steel. Uh, your barrel length is 3.12 inches. Your grip frame is made out of black, high-performance glass-filled nylon. I've owned several Ruger firearms with that kind of material, and it is very durable. Uh, the slides are integral. They are machined into the slide. Your slide finish and your barrel finish are black oxide. The width is 0 .90 of an inch, so it's less than an inch thick. The weight is 17.2 ounces. I can for confirm that's correct, but that's also dry. Um, overall length is 6 inches. Your height is 4.50 inches. The grooves are 6 grooves in the barrel. Uh, 1 in 10, uh, 1 in 10 inch right hand twist. Uh, not California approved, not Massachusetts approved and certified, with the suggested retail price of $299, and I'm seeing these as low as $207 on galleryofguns.com before taxes and a small fee of $10 or $15. Okay, so before we get into an overall discussion on this pistol, just want to talk about the differences between this and the LC9S. Now, visually, they look about the same. Uh, primary differences between the EC9S and the LC9S is that the LC9S does cost, uh, let's see, $50, $55 more, $50 bucks more, according to Bud's Guns. Um, the LC9S does have adjustable rear sights. Um, it does have a fixed front sight to it. Uh, the slide and the barrel are black oxide on the EC9S. On the LC9S, they are blued, traditionally blued. Uh, both, both pistols only come with one magazine, which I thought maybe it would come with two, on the LC9S. And that is basically about it. Oh, also on the LC9S, they are available in 14 different finishes, uh, different engraving types, and there's different dealer exclusives. Uh, when it comes to capacity on this, let's just get this out right now. Some guys, you know, want more rounds when they carry their firearm. I tend to carry the standard capacity magazine. To me, it's a little bit easier to conceal. And a second magazine is a backup. So just your 7 plus 1 mag. What's interesting about this is I purchased a second magazine um, from eBay, and the one magazine was made in Italy. I don't know if these are made by... Metgar, maybe Ruger contracts out on the spare mags, and the original magazine that came with the firearm was made in the USA. I noticed very little differences between them. The stamping looks the same, the material, the finish looks the same, the, the markings are basically identical, and uh, this pistol does come with fl uh, flat base plates for the magazine. Also, if you want even more concealability, I prefer to have the pinky rest. I'm willing to give that up, even though it may print just a little bit more. It also kind of depends on how you carry. So, spare magazines readily available on eBay. Your seven round mags, I think I paid 20 bucks, maybe $23 delivered uh, for this magazine. You can also get a nine round magazine for around $25 or $26 on eBay. <clears throat> now, I, do, I just have ball ammunition in this magazine. I usually carry uh, the Hornady Critical Defense round. Got to pick up another box, but again, you do have the option. And again, Okay, there is no round in the chamber, but I do want to show you what this is going to look like. Now, it is going to print considerably more, if that's a concern of yours. It's always that grip length that a lot of people worry about, not necessarily the uh, slide length or the frame length when it comes to conceal. It's that grip length because that's what you're going to be, you know, having unconcealed that could possibly print around what you're wearing. And that could be an issue depending on where you live. Now, it does give a considerable amount of purchase space to your hand, which I really like. I mean, if you've got 
large hands, I've got medium sized hands. That extension is really nice. Bit of an annoyance, you do have a gap right here. I wish this was maybe a little bit better tolerances, but let's go ahead and get that out. Check the chamber and we are good to go. We'll go ahead and put an empty magazine in there. Okay, so front to back, top to bottom, what do you need to know? Well, the sights, they are blackened. There are several videos on YouTube where people show you how to paint those front sights uh, if you're not sure how to do it. It's really not that hard to do. I had no trouble picking up targets with these, and we'll talk about the uh, shooting experience of it here in just a moment. Uh, but just all blackened out sights. I'm used to that on a lot of different pistols, so it really wasn't a concern for me. The slide is nice and smooth. It almost has melted edges, which makes it very easy to reholster, very easy to conceal. Goes into most of your Kydex holsters with no problems, and we'll talk about holsters here in a little bit. You do have some nice machined in. Uh, grip on the top here. You do have some nice serrations on the top which make it very easy to charge the firearm. I tend to do a top charge, not a problem, uh, but again it's there for you. I am starting to notice a little bit of wear, starting to get a little bit of patina on the firearm and that's just part of it is with the black oxide finish. It's really not that durable necessarily. It doesn't rust or anything like that, but uh, it's not going to be, it's not going to hold up as well as bluing in my opinion. Okay. You do have a mechanical safety. Oh, there's also an LC9S Pro model, although I couldn't find any for sale out there. Uh, the Pro model does not have a safety. It also does not have a magazine disconnect safety on it, which this pistol does have. Ruger's pretty big on their, uh, their safeties on their firearms, mechanical, internal, external, etc. Uh, you do have a small chamber up on the top that you can use to view if the firearm is in fact loaded. Again, we are unloaded. Again, mechanical safety, it, it is very positive. It is locking. I did not have any trouble at all at the range drawing or reholstering, having this thing engage or disengage. It does stay where it is. Uh, disassembly is a bit of a pain. I do have a cleaning video you can watch on this. You basically push this little button down right here, and then you push out the pin, and your slide is going to come off. But you do have to use a tool initially until that gets broken in in order to get that pin out for disassembly. Might be a problem if that's something that you worry about. Say if you have a malfunction in the middle of a gunfight, uh, you know, you got to clear it. You got to take the gun apart. God forbid that ever happens. Uh, it's going to require some sort of a tool. Uh, the trigger. I wish the trigger was set back a little bit further because with gloves, it's very hard to fire this firearm, especially if you're somebody that carries in the wintertime. You got to think about that. You have this little blade safety here that you need to clear before you can pull the trigger. And uh, again, let's just check. Okay, we are clear. Uh, the trigger itself, though, this is what really sold me on it. This, as somebody who carried a Sky CPX2 for three years, this is basically what the CPX2 should be in terms of trigger. It is excellent. If you have a Ruger Security 9 or a Ruger LC9S, you're already familiar with this trigger. Again, it has a little bit of travel and break. I mean, it's worth probably talking about an inch tops. Okay, let's do the reset on that. Okay, with the magazine disconnect, it's gonna be pretty hard to do, so. All right, hold on a second here, guys. There we go. <laughs> Kind of tricky to do when you've got that uh, that magazine reset. So, all right. So let's go ahead and check out that reset there. About a half an inch before it goes. Okay, it doesn't really click to tell you that, but again, it's a very smooth trigger. You don't have any kind of uh, second strike capability on this like you do on the Taurus PT-111 G2. That's another thing I want to talk about. Once you get in this uh, $250 and below range, there is a ton of competition out there for handguns for what you can go with. You've got the Sky CPX2, which I don't recommend. You can go uber cheap and go high point. Uh, you've got the Taurus uh, G2C and the G2S and the whole G2 series that's out there. There's a lot of guns out there for $250. $250 that are quality. Uh, the magazine release is not ambidextrous. This gun is basically biased towards the right hand shooter or southpaw that learns how to shoot with the right hand uh, biased firearm. Magazines do pop right out, very positive. Okay, they don't get stuck at all, which is great. Uh, in the hands, the, the grip, the, the way it pushes back in your hands, I'm not kidding you, it feels a lot like a six hour P365 initially in the hands. I know that. The P365 has some different contours to it. Um, you don't have any kind of back strap adjustment either. It's gonna fit your hand or it's not, or you just need to get used to it. But if you really tuck it in your palm and get a good grip on it, uh, you have no trouble with control whatsoever, especially locking it in place with that, that pinky grip. It really makes it feel firm and secure. 
Okay, one thing I always forget to mention, and I apologize if I didn't get this in sooner, slide manipulation on this firearm. Um, it is a fairly tight slide. You know, I prefer to do a top charge when I charge the firearm. Some people like to pull back, gripping the serrations. It is a little bit tight, so it is a little bit tense. So if you happen to have weak or arthritic hands, you know, you may need to practice this a little bit. You really need to push forward with your left or right hand while grabbing the slide. Otherwise, like I said, I tend to just do a top charge. Um, you know, if you're somebody, maybe consider going with the Smith & Wesson 380 Easy if you have weak hands or suffer from arthritis. Um, it, being it is a smaller gun, it is sometimes people for hard, hard for people to get a good grip on it and really make that slide function properly to chamber that first round. Uh, but, you know, the overall grip and fill in the hands, the purchase you can get on it is fantastic. You can get pretty much any any hands, I think, would fit this firearm. I've got medium-sized hands. If you have large hands, obviously, you're going to fill up more of that area. But uh, keeping the firearm on target and gripping it properly, not an issue whatsoever. It totally just enclose all the available real estate that's there. So do keep that in mind. Again, tight spring, going to have to practice with it. And uh, it's something that I think anybody can get used to with enough practice, but it could be an issue. Recoil, totally manageable. That was one thing that really surprised me about this pistol. Uh, the recoil, it was easy to stay on target, it was easy to shoot. Just showing off some of the shooting footage here from the range. Uh, this is from my prior video that I posted on uh, range testing this firearm. Really had no trouble, I did miss a few times, but what really blew my mind was just how much on target the gun was right out of the box. Sights, pretty much whatever your front sight starts to touch is where the rounds are gonna go. So I wouldn't say that it shoots high or low for me necessarily. Um, just showing off my initial targets, man, I was just laying them on three yards, five yards. I was really keeping them within a good defensive zone. As I backed out to 15 and 20 yards, you know, I tend to notice a little bit more of a spread with my targets, but overall, just an absolute joy to shoot. Again, the trigger, the fact that it's so smooth and the fact that it's just easy to manipulate, it really does help you stay on target, especially as somebody who was coming from, like I said before, a uh, Sky CPX2. Again, that magazine disconnect, just ever so slightly annoying. But again, the trigger, just awesome. But uh, like I said before, if you're somebody who wears gloves, you may want to reconsider or wear thinner gloves while you're carrying. Uh, grip texture is fine. I wish it had more all the way around, but that's something you could add, say, with maybe a, a Hogue grip, or maybe you want to do some of your own stippling. <clears throat> you have that option, too. We've got some, some checkering on the front strap here. And again, it's not overly aggressive, but it does stay in your hands. I had no trouble with the pistol moving in my hands, even while doing some sort of double tap firing, etc. Um, like I said before, you do get the flat base plates if you want them. So, sorry to be so quick about that, but again, a lot of the features, uh, everything you need in a basic concealed carry gun. All right, let's go ahead and move on to holster options. All right, so please don't laugh because we've all been there. The Uncle Mike's holster, the Bulldog holster, the inexpensive Blackhawk holster. This is a size five. It works okay, you know, many times at the range if I'm just doing some work and I'm gonna be running around and so on, I'll have just a simple quick draw, just a basic ballistic nylon holster that allows me to carry a second magazine. You know, what are we talking, maybe 15 bucks, 20 bucks total at your local Walmart. It'll do the job. I do have uh, hidden hybrid holsters that sent me one of their hybrid holsters. that has got the Kydex front with the uh, leather back and the suede finish on the backside. I'm able to comfortably carry this thing at a three o'clock position all day with no issues whatsoever. Even with the tactical muffin top going on, it still doesn't rub too bad up on the top there. As long as I've got an undershirt going on, I have no trouble. After wearing it, the leather is breaking in nicely. This does allow for inside the waistband and outside the waistband also. And you can check this out on my channel. I do have, uh, I believe, a review on this where I talk about what it's like carrying it. Um, it does stay stable with these hooks and a good duty belt or a carry belt it will stay firmly planted. So it is a very nice, easy to conceal setup, even for somebody who's a bigger guy like myself. The fact that the firearm is less than one inch wide definitely comes in very handy in terms of concealability. Uh, if there were any cons about the firearm, I would say that the, you know, the feel in the hand, it's gonna be a love it or hate it kind of kind of situation, although you can get used to it. Also, there's just a lot of, of openings and, and, and just big tolerances, large tolerances in this area that kind of bothers me a little bit. If you happen to find yourself rolling around or having to take a laying position, you get any kind of de debris or rocks in here, you do run the possibility of getting something wedged in there. I mean, you got a pretty sizable hole right here where you you can see around uh, right here on the side. So make sure you keep this clean, especially if you daily carry this thing. Keep that lint out of there, keep those debris out of there. Wish it had slightly tighter tolerances, but it doesn't essentially, and I hate saying this, but really it is what it is. So in the end, should you buy one of these things? Look man, if you want an inexpensive, easy to conceal firearm, you don't want to break the bank, 
go with the EC9S. If you got about 50 bucks more, go with the LC9S, and I think you'll be maybe happier with the better sights with the dots on them and the adjustability versus the very Spartan basic setup that you see right here. Uh, warranties on Ruger is kind of interesting. I don't think they necessarily give you any kind of uh, a time for the warranty, but if you've ever had any kind of issues, you can contact customer service. And I have friends that have sent firearms into Ruger and they've had them repaired, even though the mistakes and the, and the, the issues that happened to the gun were user caused. So keep that in mind. So they don't really give you any kind of implied warranty because apparently legally they're not required to, but they will honor their warranty claims if they need to. Um, again, black oxide finish, expect it to scratch, expect it to start, you know, showing some patina, some wear and tear as you carry it, but that's just part of the deal. So guys, that is it. That is my basics on the uh, Ruger EC9S, my tabletop review. I highly recommend picking one up. Love the trigger. I really haven't heard about people having too many issues with it. For ammunition, I've only fired uh, 115 grain Federal, um, brand new manufacturer brass through it. Um, and I've also put some uh, Hornady critical defense through it with zero issues whatsoever. I can't really attest to steel case ammo or aluminum case ammo. I know sometimes Ruger guns can be a little bit picky with those types of ammunition, but that's something you can run into. So that's it, guys. Uh, if you like what you see, please like or subscribe, and you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can also follow me on GunChannels.com. You can also find me over on GunStreamer, YouTube, um, as well as Facebook and Instagram and Twitter if I didn't just say so. So otherwise, guys, that's it. A lot more videos coming your way. Hopefully, we'll take the EC9S to put a lot more rounds downrange and, and give you a long-term report down the road. Otherwise, guys, that's it. I want you to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right. Have a great week, guys. Bye-bye.